I know what you're thinking. This is going the wrong way. It's okay. I promise. There's a plan. Stick around and find out. YouTube, what's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in. So, as you can see, the front end's back completely off the car, transmission's out, and we've actually uh, removed everything off the firewall now. And that's because uh, we've got some cleanup work to do. <clears throat> the, everything we did prior with bolting the, the front clip up, which is now sitting over there, was just to make sure everything was going to fit up, some mock-up work, and get the steering pseudo sorted out so when we start going together for staying together, we know that we at least have most of the key parts sorted out. So what we need to do before we actually go down that road is we need to do some cleanup on the firewall. So to avoid um, packaging up yucky stuff back into the build, uh, to prolong how long this will stay nice before someday when maybe it'll ever see a proper restoration. So in doing so, we're out here, we've got a couple of different things going on. Uh, we'll be using some wire brushes, some scrapers and whatnot so that we can get rid of this kind of, you know, I'll show you. We're gonna get rid of this old undercoating garbage off of here that's all coming loose so that uh, so that we can put a, a coat of basically a, a rust encapsulator, paint, primer, whatever, basically get the metal coated up, refreshed, so we don't have to get back under in this area again anytime soon. That's, that's the plan anyway. Uh, we, I do plan on doing a, whoa, sorry about that, um, another undercoating type finish out here where it's in the fender well, but I don't have the inner fenders for the Heights front end yet. So I don't know what that line needs to be and I don't want the undercoating finish actually in the engine bay. So today we're, we aren't gonna be messing with that at all. We're just gonna be cleaning it up and basically getting a base coat of paint on here. And if, uh, if we make good time, then we might actually get the front end bolted back on to stay on. Uh, in this video, I don't think that'll happen today because I want to give the paint a chance to actually set up and harden a little bit before we start bolting stuff to it. But that's our goal. Um, hey, can't you be blowing dirt at me? You want to yeah. see, see a magic trick? Let's see it. <laughs> Ta-da! That was ridiculous. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's a pretty nice day out. Um, I'm still wearing long sleeves. It's right on the right on the edge of needing, needing long sleeves. Long sleeves on, a little warm, long sleeves off, a little cold, which means as soon as I start working, I'll probably end up pitching the long sleeves. But uh, it's warm enough that we can actually lay down some paint on here and it'll, it'll harden up. And it's a Saturday afternoon right now, which means hopefully tomorrow, being Sunday, we'll be able to get back out here and start bolting this front end together to stay together. Uh, yeah. That's, that's the plan. I do have some parts coming for the transmission service that we're going to need to do before that can go in. And then we'll have to decide what we're doing about the motor. We got that one sitting over there or that one sitting right there in the front of that car, which needs to come out. Speaking of, um, if you haven't watched the last couple of videos towards the end, you probably didn't catch that we've got a poll going on for whether we put the 327 that's sitting in the red car or the 350 that came out of the wagon back into the wagon. So on, on that poll, that if you go to the community tab, which I'll pop it up somewhere here on the screen, what that, where to go, go throw your vote in whether or not we do the 327 or the 350. Uh, and I'm gonna have a video coming up here real soon that will dig into a little bit more about those two motors so that maybe you can have a little bit more information about making a, uh, a, you know, being informed about the vote that you're gonna make because whatever YouTube decides is what we're gonna put in this car. And last time I checked, that poll is at 
Well, there's not a whole lot of votes on it, but it's pegging at 50-50 right now. So I don't, I don't want to ha have it fall to my decision. It needs to go to YouTube's decision. So we need more votes. Anyway, you ready to get to work? Let's do this. All right, let's get to work. Okay, so we spent, what, hour, hour and a half? Spent about an hour and a half. Uh, ooh, all right. That's better. Um, a little dusty. Uh, we spent about an hour and a half. We did a, a good bit of cleanup here on the firewall. Squeaky clean. And, uh, I mean, we, we're not in a body shop. We're not doing body shop work. Uh, the idea here was just to... Uh, get the crud off in any areas where there's some rust buildup to, to knock that down just to real light surface rust, no scale, rust scale or anything sitting on there so that we can put a fresh coat of a, uh, a rust encapsulator base paint on it. Um, I went down into the tunnel area to about where the body seam is, about eight, 10 inches back. Um, beyond there gets into the actual floor pan, which this car is gonna need floor pan work in the future. Um, same down here in these areas, I went down to about where you get to the, the bottom of the tow board. There's some rot down in this on the, uh, the floorboards, both on the driver's side and even more over here on the passenger side down near the tow board. So there was no point in really going too far underneath for that. And then we, uh, we dug into the, the pinch along the side a good bit to, uh, to get that all cleaned up so we can get a, uh, some preventative maintenance on that just to preserve it. It's in pretty good shape. The base metal's really good. There's a few spots like right here where there's a little bit of pitting, but not nearly enough to consider doing uh, major body work on this car. Just because there's enough things with this car that are far from perfect that if you were gonna start perfecting little things like that right there in the pinch that aren't perfect, then, well, you'd be doing body work on this car for a really long time because there's a lot of small stuff in the various body panels that needs work. But things like this where we knocked all the scale off here, uh, that way when we put the, uh, the rust encapsulator, hopefully we can preserve, just preserve the condition that it's in. 
That's the goal. Preserve the condition that it's in. Um, you, know, you didn't wipe off the water off the steering column. But uh, so yeah, we cleaned it up and then we sprayed it down just with water to get all the dust and everything off of it because as you can see, we made quite the dust pile on this side and there's another big dust pile on the other side where we knocked all the, the loose undercoating off of there so we could get the, uh, the preventatives in back behind that undercoating because a lot of it was flaking off. And uh, let me tell you what, that, uh, that undercoating, that factory undercoating from 60, 59 years ago, unless it was already flaking off for whatever reason, where it was still bonded good, that stuff's a pain in the neck to get off. It actually took a lot of work to get that scraped off of there um, between wire brushing it and uh, using a scraper. But what I will tell you, if you're thinking about doing something like this, brass wire brushes are your friend. Um, these will do, they're not nearly as quick as a steel wire brush for tackling stuff, but the brass is softer than steel, which so this won't eat away at your base metal. Brass wire brushes, I highly recommend brass wire brushes. Um, anytime you're trying to avoid eating away at the base metal on something like this, where I didn't want to take away any base metal, I just wanted to get the crud off of it. So. Uh, we're going to let this get to where it's completely dry, which we're not too far from. Um, we'll be able to uh, put a, a coat of paint on it, which is, you know, one of her favorite things to do is to paint stuff. So maybe we'll let her, we'll give her a chance and see if she doesn't get too carried away with it. And, uh, but before we can do that, we do need to do a little bit of masking because I don't want to get paint up on the cowl or on the windshield. But uh, yeah. It's uh, some solid progress on this, and uh, we should have the paint on it tonight so it can cure up, and hopefully we bolt the, uh, the front end back up tomorrow, maybe even. Maybe even later tonight if we make good progress. We'll have to see how well the paint dries. Anyway, we'll catch up in a, in a few. Well, we gave it a, a little while. Let the, the, uh, let the sheet metal all dry up on there after cleaning it up and Despite the fact that we didn't clean up any of our mess down underneath, don't, don't worry about that. Um, I did throw a little bit of masking up over the windshield so we don't get any overspray up on the cowl and on the windshield. The, the stuff we're throwing on this thing is Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. Instantly converts rust to a protected paintable surface. This is what we're putting down as, our, as a base on here. Um, we used it on the floorboards and it actually came out pretty good. So we're going to use it on the firewall and go from there. Uh, one thing I will point out that you can probably see is most of the engine bay area of the firewall, we didn't strip down very far. All we did was, uh, oh, the light's going wonky on me. Hold on, let me grab a light. I got a light for just this reason. Um, hold on. There we go. So most of the firewall in this region we, that's actually in the engine bay, we didn't pull all the base paint off of there because most of it's in pretty good shape. It was just dirty. Um, we just cleaned up areas like around the brake booster and some other areas that were roughed up that needed to be cleaned. Uh, the real work all took place in the fender well areas and that's what we're looking, I'm looking to preserve here. Oh, I just blasted myself in the face with the light. Don't you laugh at me. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. What are you getting a sissy mask? I'm getting a sissy mask. Yeah. Um, so now we're getting ready to throw the paint on there. Um, we're going to give the, uh, the wife a shot to see if she can uh, lay it down without runs. Mm -hmm. If she makes it all runny, we're going to take away her painting privileges. Can you hear me? Rude. All right, show us what you got. And uh, not these, right? No, you don't need to spray the the plastic pieces. But yeah, and we just need a light coat for the first coat because we're going to end up doing another coat in about a half hour. You don't have to whip quite as fast, but yeah, you got it. Oh, no. 
You can't just Don't hold it. Don't tell me what to do. You can't just hold it. Whoa. Whoa. Who taught you how to spray paint? You did. I did not. I definitely did I went not to spray teach painting you. school. What are you talking about? Yeah, it shows. <laughs> And uh, unfortunately, you know, I, there's a, there's this great other channel out there uh, called Rusty Speed and Custom. He's got this pretty neat setup that he rigged up on his uh, sawzall to use a sawzall to rapidly shake paint. Um, I haven't rigged that up, you know, the redneck paint shaker yet, but. Uh, it, it'll have to be in my in my plans because shaking paint is kind of annoying. Yeah, it makes me do it. <laughs> so, anyway, um, we're going to get some paint going, and you're probably going to get some fast forward with some tunes, and uh, we'll get we'll get this covered. waiting to put on the second coat. Okay, we're going to let this set up for about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so. I don't know what time it is, so that's going to be a little bit difficult to track. And then, uh, then we'll put another coat on there and well, the work on the firewall will be basically done. This car is going to get ready to start going back together. Woohoo! <laughs>
Okay, uh, as you probably saw, I got another coat of paint on there. I think we got all the paint on it that we're gonna put on it at least before we start putting the front end back together. Um, it's gotten dark outside, it's starting to get a little later into the evening. Dinner's on its way. Uh, we gotta let paint cure up the rest of the way before we can actually start bolting stuff together. And uh, I'm gonna need to go to the store and get some new bolts because, well, it needed some new bolts. But uh, yeah, it, overall, pretty good progress. Let me uh, flip this. We'll take a quick look. It definitely, let me get the angle, angle so it doesn't do some weird glare stuff, but definitely much better than it was. So I, overall, I think that this is going to uh, be a significant benefit long term for preserving the front end of this car i said there is plan to do a uh an undercoating type finish on the fender wall areas to uh give that a tougher finish for rocks and whatnot that'll get kicked up but i'll have to get the inner fenders for the heights for this front end kit so that they i know where that actually that lines up and because i don't want that undercoating in the actual engine bay uh, while I was at it, I, uh, I did paint all the mating surfaces of the heights kit. So this surface, I cleaned that up, put a fresh coat of paint on that. And same with the, uh, the down bars, I painted the mating surfaces there so that, uh, that those areas don't have anything, at least that we're starting with something fresh and preserve and extend the life of the steel on this car. Uh, Overall, I mean, is it a, uh, what are you doing? Whatever I want. That sounds about right. Um, this is not a, a rust repair. Uh, this is just a cleanup and preservation type deal here. And it's just to, you know, make the car decent. Like I was saying earlier, there's enough issues rust wise that some of the small stuff up here on the firewall not worth the time you put into it. You don't start fixing that little teeny tiny stuff, you know, patch paneling and stuff, and unless you're doing a serious overhaul, in which case we would start with some more of the, uh, the more significant issues like uh, this one back here in the rear quarter where my, my finger can enter the, uh, the quarter panel. So, um, and at some point we may start working on some of that but to be fair, the idea of this car is to be able to drive it anywhere, not care, beat on it, have some fun, do burnouts, and just enjoy it as a, uh, a driver beater hot rod. Right? Right? Yes. Just enjoy it. So um, I'll probably run to the hardware store in the morning, get the bolts that I need to uh, bolt the front end up. And, uh, well, you'll see that when you see it, which will probably be in, you know, just a few seconds, unless this video is really long and we might end it there. And if I do end the video, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next one. If I don't end the video, we'll see you in about, I don't know, a split second. Bye. Quick plug here. Uh, I just wanted to start off by saying uh, happy birthday to my little brother. He's, he's older today. And uh, if, you, uh, if you are interested and you halfway enjoy what I'm doing watching these videos, uh, you should probably go check out his YouTube channel. I've got it right up there on the screen right now. Uh, Rusty Speed and Custom. He's, uh, he's doing a whole bunch of stuff on his channel. Um, uh, unfortunately, we live states apart, which is why we probably haven't done anything together yet. I'm sure that'll come. But uh, take a few minutes. Bounce over to his channel. Uh, February 24th is his birthday, which means when you're watching this video, it's at least a week after his birthday. But plugging it in there for him. Check out Rusty Speed and Custom on YouTube. He's uh, he's doing some much better rust actual rust repair on uh, his project with some how tos on uh, getting it done with you know the basics. So go check it out. Support his channel. Give him a subscribe. Uh, don't leave me too soon. But Make sure you go check out his channel and happy birthday, dude.
It's a new day and uh, we're still here. This video is not over just yet. Uh, we went out, we got a bunch of bolts that we needed so we could put the front end on with uh, fresh new bolts, freshly painted. The paint's all dried up. So we're gonna go ahead and bolt this up again, but this time it will stay, right? Yes, hope well, hopefully. It will stay, It right? will stay. Yes, it will, it will stay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get to it. Okay, so what we're going to check real quick. Come on, man. You have to get down low. Get down now, low, low, low. This car is not, I can't imagine this car is perfect, okay? It's an old, it's an old car and it's seen a long life and well, there's, there's a few bumps and bruises underneath, but we're going to try and check the, the angle of the main body frame uh, to the angle of the front subframe. Ideally, we want them to be perfectly parallel. So uh, before we put the down bars on, I want to find out where it's at currently and see if we can't adjust up or down a little bit if needed so that when we put the down bars on, at least uh, we're starting at a good starting point, hopefully. So we come underneath. Find a good He's level gonna spot. He's going to make me get on the ground and get dirty. Hey. Oh, it might be easier on this side. Oh. But okay. Oh. oh my gosh, it smells like gas. Yeah, it smells like gas because we leaked a little gas. Get over it. All right, so I've got the my level finder on the main part of the frame that's not, it's kind of buckled up here like someone put a jack stand going the wrong way right here and kind of buckled it up. So I came back to basically the flattest spot that I've got. I put my angle finder on there. It's showing that we're right now, the car is sitting at uh, 2.4 degrees with the nose high. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this button. And now our 2.4 degree reference is zero. So we can take this guy off of there. You coming? My goodness. Come on. I'm coming, I'm coming. You're moving slow. They're staring at the ground. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're staring at the ground. Okay. So when we take our, our gauge after zeroing it, putting it, oh, we're gonna flip it over. It should still work. Right there. And we're showing 1.3. 3, 1.4. 1.4, and that's going to be nose low. 1, 3, 1, 2, 
ماست Okay, looks like we're going to have to settle for where it's at right now um, because basically at this point I have now uh, lifted the car off the jack stands by the subframe out front and any if I jack it up any, any further I'm changing my point of reference which I may have already done. Let's we'll see, it's a reading point four there if I slap it back underneath. Oh, what are we going to get? Point 0.7. So, yeah, we've brought 0.6 nose high. So, we've got about a one degree, a one degree difference in the front subframe to the main chassis rail. And the only way you could possibly correct that would be some sort of shimming or adjustment to the firewall where this front subframe mounts. Uh, down at the bottom, which we're not going to do. Um, it should be, at one degree, it should be close enough to where we want it. Um, if you don't have one of these and you're going to do this kind of job, I highly recommend it. Um, they're extremely useful for anything from setting pinion angles to checking chassis level. And, you know, they just, they're extremely handy. So we should be able, you know, point 0.3 on that side. Point three on that side, point four. So our it, it just works really well. They've got magnets in both sides. You can set a zero point um, so that you're working with a reference, not a, just a regular bubble level trying to eyeball it. Um, this one's made by Klein, um, and you can find them on Amazon. I think it was like 30 bucks, 35 bucks, something like that. Extremely useful tool that you should add to your collection if you're doing any kind of work like this. Anyway, we're going to get the... Uh, the front down bar is bolted up and then uh, we should be about done with this video and this step of the process and ready to start looking at what's next. Do you see this? Do you see this right here? See this? This is what being a camera person is. Yeah, you got to get dirty sometimes. Deal with it. Okay, we're all bolted up. Go ahead and... Uh, Put us back on the ground. Hot damn. Looking you wanna, good. You want to pull the paper? The paper? You want to pull the paper? I'll pull the paper. Boring. More like it. They're what? Oh my goodness. You oh. failed. You failed. You tried to be a smart aleck about it and you failed. Guys, there we have it. Uh, we pulled the front end off, cleaned it up a good bit, fresh coat of uh, a matte rust encapsulating paint on there, and uh, the firewall should be good for, uh, well, I don't know, at least a couple more years, I guess. Um, now the uh, now the fun process will have to start. We'll actually start putting it back together to stay together. Uh, probably going to take a week off of this car because we've been we've been working on it a lot and uh, we've done a lot of videos. What are you doing? You're Nothing. Make, you're making a bunch of noise. No. Yeah, you're making a bunch of noise. Just mind your own business. <laughs> you're making a bunch of noise. Anyway, we're probably going to take a week off of this car uh, for a couple reasons. One, we've been doing basically nothing but this car for a lot longer than originally planned when we started to do what was just going to be some some tune-up improvements for the car so that it was going to be more streetable to 
down the front end swap uh, rabbit hole because it just made more sense to invest the money that way. Uh, but that means we've been doing nothing but 65 station wagon for a couple of months now, two, three months. Uh, so we'll probably take a week off of it. And the other reason I'm going to take a week off of it is I'm waiting on parts. I need to get a few things ordered for the transmission so that I can give that a proper tune up. It needs that new governor put in there, um, new pan seal, new tail shaft seal, and a, uh, and a new filter. So some basic, you know, maintenance on that while it's out and easy to maintenance. And then so we'll what also- what are we gonna be working on? Ne next weekend? I, I don't know yet. <gasps> dun, I mean, dun, dun. I'll have to tune in next weekend to find out what we're working like on. Like you do not have enough projects. No, I definitely have enough <laughs> projects. I don't know, the, the odds are we're gonna work on uh, doing something with the race car just cause the weather's really good. And well, hopefully the weather will be really good again next weekend, but we can look at what, you know, start, start the process on that one. I don't exactly know what that'll be. But uh, what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna work on this. I need parts and I need a break from it. Um, so we're gonna get this one tucked and put away for at least a week. And uh, which means you, it'll be a couple weeks before it shows back up on the channel with new whatever, unless plans change, you never know, it could change. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, we appreciate you sticking around and hanging out and the support on the channel. And we uh, will see you guys on the next one. Bye. <laughs>